Hello everybody, it's Sanyo, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about the interview that happened yesterday between ARK Invest and Dr. David Liu. I want to talk about this interview, lots of hidden gems, lots of things we can learn from, and a couple of points I want to bring up in this video that I think will help you as an investor, as a researcher in this space. Now, before we do that, guys, before we talk about this, please do like this video, smash that like button. You guys know how the YouTube algorithms work. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It really does help the channel. So. Dr. David Liu, we actually covered his episode with Ark Invest maybe a few weeks ago. Uh, briefly, we covered it. It was a great episode. Shout out to Dr. David Liu. He's doing an amazing job in this field. Him and his team, just the way he speaks. I think he is really knowledgeable, not just about the technology behind CRISPR, whether that's in base editing, prime editors, or just the first generation of CRISPR, which is uh, nuclease, you know, cutting that double DNA strands. What I think is really amazing with Liu is that he is actually aware of the companies in this space. And we'll talk about that briefly, how important this is, but he really understands how fundamentally the businesses are structured, right? And I think this is rare in, in this space, right? You often get researchers and scientists that are very, very knowledgeable about the tech behind it. But when it comes to business, investment opportunities, and everything to do with revenues, profits, commercial products, I think you sort of get that lackluster from, from the general masses of scientists and researchers. It makes sense, right? They spend their time in labs, they spend their time with research papers, and perhaps having time to talk about the commercial side of things. Businesses is quite, quite, quite hefty, and it's, it is quite heavy in, in terms of the, your time, right? It is... Uh, that's exactly why we have this channel, right? We want to help you guys, investors, we want to provide you guys information. And uh, Liu here, I think he is really, really well uh, informed about businesses, specifically with Beam Therapeutics and Prime Medicine. And before we even talk about the business side of things, I do want to talk about the three technologies, right? So this episode was amazing, right? This was episode was amazing about it. And the reason why it was amazing about the technology is that uh, Liu actually makes a point in this interview that in the 75 years of molecular biology, there have been three technologies, right? So 75 years, there have been three technologies when it comes to human cell genome editing that are deemed successful as we speak, right? That's the first generation of CRISPR, which is the double DNA, double uh, cu uh, uh, strand cuts. So that's basically, you know, the scissors. That's the analogy being used. Then you have the second generation, which we believe is the base editor, right? And that's the idea of a pen, right? That's what Liu actually references it from. And that's basically changing, instead of cutting your DNA strand, you actually change, you change that letter, right? From A to T or from C to G, right? And the reason why this is so important is because from with that, you eliminate the need to cut your double DNA strand. And if you just think about it, it makes sense, right? If you have if you have a paper, you're writing stuff on it, right? There's stuff written on it. You're not going to go cut what you want to remove, right? And just, just hope for the best, right? You're just going to use a pencil, right? Uh, to rewrite whatever you want to write. But then there's the third generation of CRISPR, which is what prime medicine is working on, which is a private company. But we'll go get to that shortly. And that's the uh, prime editors, right? And the prime editors is actually referenced as a word processing. And that's where you sort of, that's the analogy people use like copy paste, right? You no longer have to cut DNA strand and you don't have to just be limited to that four sequence change, right? From A to T, T to A, or C to G, or G to C. Right, you can actually just copy and copy your base to another base, right? Which is quite interesting. Now, the reason why I'm covering these three technologies is because what the Liu talks about in this interview is that one, he is very bullish on beam therapeutics and in base editors. And the reason why this is such is because he believes the base editors have their own applications, prime editors have their own application, base editors, in his words, are about, let's take a look at my notes here, thousand times, thousand times uh, smaller when it comes to coding nucleotide than 
prime editor. So that's one point, right? So already there, already there, already there, you see that there's a benefit with base editors over prime editors. Also, also, there's a point about PAM sequences here. I have to rewatch that uh, clip because I, I didn't really uh, fully understand it. Maybe you guys understood it more. Leave me a comment below. But he, he did mention that prime editing is less PAM sensitive, right? So Ali asked about PAM sequences and he answered basically a long format answer. And most of the answers were really long formats, really good uh, answers, uh, to be fair, but he did say that prime editors are less PAM sensitive. So there are a couple of applications in each of these generations, right? Actually, for the first generation of double DNA strands, he actually specifies uh, the sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, right? And he basically says that because there's so many patients in the US alone and in other regions around the world, uh, it wouldn't make sense to start focusing on the second generation or even third generation when there's so many patients that are in dire need of a cure, right, for sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia. And just because of the way those diseases are structured, a double DNA strand cut will definitely suffice. And then that will eventually, eventually cure those patients that are eventually going to lose their lives, right? So you're running against time there. So talking about efficiency makes sense for certain diseases, but for certain other diseases, it just doesn't make sense to talk about efficiencies when there are people dying, right? And I think this is a great point to be made here. And that's the analogy I wanted to sort of wrap all of this up with. The analogy of a boat, car, and truck. So if you think about it, right, humans, we sort of, you know, produced boats, you know, centuries ago, right, to move from point A to point B. But then we eventually move to cars, right? And then we eventually move to trucks, right? But that doesn't mean that boats are not used today, and that doesn't mean that cars are not used today. In fact, in fact, boats are always being used today, and cars obviously are always being used today, just like trucks are always being used today, right? And obviously, for example, trucks may be the most sold car vehicle in U.S., the standard sedan car are still sold a lot around the world and boats are still being used for commercial side of things and even for cruises and even for transportation or just for uh, leisure travel. So boats are definitely have an application in our world and cars definitely have applications in our world just like trucks do. And I think that's an amazing analogy with the first generation of CRISPR, the second generation of CRISPR and the third generation of CRISPR in this case, right? Uh, actually, I wouldn't call them generation of CRISPR because I could say that Kaibu Biosciences are the second generation of CRISPR, but they're obviously not doing base editing and uh, graphic bio as well. So let's just call it, you know, double DNA strand cut nuclease, uh, base editing and prime editors, right? So that's the first, second, third categories. And I think that's an amazing analogy. I think just putting that in that format just makes it easier to understand. So I think this interview, like I said, was amazing for people that are not really deep in the weeds with um, with the CRISPR. I think it really helps understand us, even on a technical, technical basis, especially when it gets to the PAM sequences part, is definitely, definitely a valuable, valuable um, interview to learn from. Now, I do want to mention here that uh, Liu actually talks about the viral and non-viral delivery methods, right? And there are complications using viral delivery vectors, which is what the first uh, generation of companies like CRISPR Therapeutics and TLA are using. Now, what Bean Therapeutics and Verve Therapeutics are, are using is non-viral delivery vehicles. And actually, again, Liu talks about the applications, right? And he talks about how although non-viral vehicles are safer in some sense, there are some applications that you just cannot do it with non-viral vehicles the way we have current technology today. And he did mention there are many, many labs working on that. And we'll see how the future beholds. But ultimately, today, we have to work with viral vehicles methods just the, the way it's structured right now. And my... My put here, and actually Ali mentions this in, in, her, in the episode, she talks about how, you know, airplanes, right? Airplane use, obviously, a vast amount of petroleum, right? It, it does pollute our world. But ultimately, for you to get from uh, New York City to Tokyo, you're not going to go do that in a boat, right? It, just, it will take you months, uh, days, right? And if you take that in an airplane, it could be less than 24 hours, obviously. So 
airplane makes sense in that sense, but obviously airplane wouldn't make sense in some sense for, for example, between, you know, a uh, 30 minutes drive, right? And again, it comes down to applications. And I think biotech, genomics, genome editing boils down to application. I think the total addressable market is so vast, so big that us as human, we try to compare technology to technology, right? And a lot of people that are bullish on beam therapeutics are going to say, well, you know, forget about the first generation of CRISPR therapeutics, right? Uh, NTLA, NTLA um, editors, you know, it's all about the, that beam based editors and even prime editors, which is a private company, prime medicine. But ultimately, it depends about the application. You're running against time. There are many, many people that are in dire need of those cures. And if you can get those cures on those hands of those patients, it doesn't really matter at this point about the efficiency. If you can cure them successfully, uh, again, you're running against time. This is valuable. It's not just about looking pretty and good in research papers. It's about actually curing patients. You guys, we have to remind ourselves it is about the patients. It is about human health there. And the last point I'll make here is in this episode is it's amazing how he sort of doubled down on the fact that Beam Therapeutics and Prime Medicine, which is a private company, they're actually, you know, leaderships into wine, right? They're both on each other board. They're directors, leadership. They talk to each other continuously. They were sort of, they're sort of in that, um, that uh, synergy. There's an amazing synergy between those two companies. And they do have a partnership, exclusive partnership from Beam Therapeutics to Prime Medicine. So... To me, you know, if you invest in beam therapeutics, you're essentially getting a piece of the pie of prime medicine, in my opinion, because because of that exclusive partnership. And also beam therapeutics actually hold equity in prime medicine. So you definitely do get some of that benefit there. And the last point, again, I will make is that David R. Liu actually makes a great point that, you know, all these companies in the space, whether you're in base editing, whether you're in prime editing, or whether you're in that uh, double DNA strand cuts, a nuclease uh, a technology, all these companies support each other, right? We're all in this sort of basket of emerging technologies. Uh, and although right now there's those three technology, it may be possible you have some future future technologies, right? I think he mentions a few of them in that episode, which is highly, again, highly recommended guests to uh, listen to that episode. But there's a few of them. But he does mention it probably won't be maybe like 50 technologies, right? But again, think about the idea of a boat, a car, a truck, you know, there, there's going to be several iterations of technology and just depends about the application, depends about what communities, governments want, depends about the patients, depends about the type of diseases, depends so many, so many factors involved. Uh, but ultimately, there will be many winners. And that I think that was really the base point here from Liu here talks about how all these companies supporting each other. For example, NTLA, when they released their data for phase one, Liu actually mentions in this episode, although although in Twitter, he actually uh, he actually was not a big fan of NTLA shifting to base editing in their press release back in April. Uh, he still, you know, again, yesterday in this episode, he he actually congratulated NTLA for their uh, NTLA 2001 phase one data on the human uh, in vivo data. So to me, all these companies are supporting each other. I think all these companies are looking out for each other, especially are, are hoping for success because ultimately, if you get one FDA CRISPR drug approved, whether that's from CTX001, from CRISPR therapeutics, or from a base editing technology, or even from a prime editing technology, you're going to make many winners in this space. Everyone will benefit. So we'll leave it off like this. I think I've already said too much here. I just wanted to cover some of these bullet points here. Some some of the things I think is very useful from you for you as an investor. I'm curious to see what you guys thought about the episode below. Leave me a comment below. Uh, if you did find value from it, please do like this video. If you haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe. Share this video. It really what does help this channel. So thank you so much for watching and we will see each other's in the next video and shout out to Ark and Vass and Ali and the whole team there. They're doing an amazing job. Give them a follow guys, whether that's on social media or just listening to their work and subscribe to their emails, uh, subscription um, newsletter. 
They do a great job for genomics. I know I've made some comments about ArcG Fund, how I'm not a big fan of funds, but ultimately the work they're doing here, providing these interviews, providing these articles, having this liaison, this, this bridge between retail investors and this space that is growing so fast and that that is risky in some sense, but these interviews help us, you know, solidify our arguments, solidify our thesis about CRISPR, about this space, about the war on cancers. You know, I, I think it's just amazing. So congratulations to the whole team at ARK Invest for this interview. Keep up the good work, guys. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see each other in the next video. Thank you.